welcome to the 100 mile Big Sugar Gravel Race. So at the start of the year, I picked this race as my like most A of the A races. It was the one that I was most excited about. I thought I could do really well here. It's not at elevation. I can drive to it, which makes it a lot easier. So I, I really was excited about this race and I was focused on it the whole year. However, I actually almost didn't even do this race. Um, so at BWR North Carolina, I took a DNF and it was like just, it was not a good time. And uh, I, after that race, I didn't even want to touch my bike. And I didn't ride for like seven weeks. I had like the biggest pity party for myself. Um, and didn't do anything, lost all my fitness, was like thinking about selling my bikes, I just didn't even want to see it. Um, finally, Sarah challenged me to get back in shape, start riding again, and to, to do this race. But I only had 13 weeks to get uh, in shape for this event. So I made some changes to my training, I now started coaching myself, um, and I really focused on it. I really started to enjoy riding again. Um, so I'm coming into this race actually feeling quite fit. I did a road race uh, the week before. I was on my gravel bike, and I did very well there. So I'm thinking, I'm like, man, fitness is high. I'm super excited for the event. I'm actually really enjoying riding my bike again, which is wonderful. Um, and coming in, I thought, man, if I could go sub six hours and be like top 30 or 40 overall, I would just, that would make the whole year that would be my redemption and I would be doing great and that was that was the goal coming into this race six hours and like top 40 overall the first selection point came just three miles into the gravel and you can see uh, I get stuck behind this guy in yellow um, and quickly come around to the left side and there's immediately this sort of separation that's happening I was really watching for these. I didn't want to miss any of uh, these moments. So quickly, right on the power, cover that gap immediately. Um, and if I had a rear-facing camera, you would see that like this gap has opened. This is now going to be sort of that first separation. Um, so very quickly, right back onto the, the wheel of this guy in blue. Um, and I'm in position. I've, I've covered the brake. I'm with the front group. Everything is going perfectly. And then this happens. All right, let's see that. Let's see that again. What, what just happened here? Okay, yep, right, right there. That is where I messed up. So as far as I can tell, the group slowed when it had this like uh, exposed bedrock on the trail. And because I was still catching up, I was coming up with more speed. So I didn't slow down as much as they did and then just crossed wheels with the guy in blue and and that was it um, now I've crashed before and you don't actually feel the crash you just feel it later um, I felt this crash I felt every one of those rocks uh, I also landed really hard on my head uh, cracked my helmet um, had a uh, kind of a headache as immediate as soon as I got up um, so I was thinking, I was like, do I have a concussion? Am I supposed to, like, stop? Am I supposed to take, like, another DNF? I've worked so hard to get here. Like, things are going so well. Like, what what am I supposed to do? Um, and you see me kind of standing in the road. I'm actually trying to pick up my nutrition. Um, and uh, I remember an interview that a pro gave. I think they, this was that Unbound, um, and he said something to the extent of, like, no one will have a perfect day. Everyone will have some sort of issue. Uh, but if you can just deal with those problems and keep going, you'll actually do really well. Uh, so it's about just keep moving forward. Solve your problem and move forward. Uh, so that, that became my focus. I was like, all right, I'm just going to get back on my bike. We're going to kind of see how this goes. And if it goes okay, I'm just going to ride like, steady 260 watts. And I'm just going to start catching people. And we're going to form groups and we're just going to keep going. Uh, so that's what I did. While I'm trying to catch up, let's talk about the bike. I'm riding the Lauf True Grit with the fiberglass suspension fork. This is probably one of the only courses where that fork really did work for me. I mean, even Keegan Swenson was on a suspension fork. This was such a chunky technical course. I mean, you've already seen what happens on some of the gravel. Uh, so yeah, the, the fork actually did 
great work for me. Um, tires. Everyone wants to know about tires. I am on the Specialized Pathfinder S-Works 42 mil with run flat inserts. I've got 27 PSI in the front and 30 PSI in the rear. Um, and because everyone was talking about the gravel, I actually have extra silica sealant in each tire, so five fluid ounces, twice what I would normally run. Uh, for nutrition, I've got my Use Sweet Hydration Pack, two bottles, uh, and a combo of that like scratch super fuel mix and just regular drink mix. And then supplementing in with the SIS high carb gels. I'm aiming for about 90 grams of carbs per hour. Coming up on 20 miles in, uh, and this guy, the DNA tattoo on his calf, we actually did a lot of work together. He had the same idea as me, so we would just we'd catch up to people, ride with the group for a few minutes, and then move through the group and then catch the next one. Uh, so as soon as we got out of this road section, there was actually the first timing mat, 20 miles in. And I was actually 45th overall, so much better than I expected. There were only two hike-a-bike sections on this course, so this was one of them. You had this more than 90 degree turn right into this really loose gravel. Um, immediately I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to ride this. So because I think I'm Matthew Vanderpool, I'm like, I pick up the bike, cyclocross style, and start running. Because clearly that's what you do in a 100 mile gravel race. This is a really great example of like just how chunky the gravel was. It doesn't really come through on the GoPro, but like I didn't select this clip specifically for that. This is just how like beefy and chunky and loose the gravel was the whole day. It 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 really was as bad as people say it was. Most of the day actually was kind of spent like this. So we would we would hit these climbs and I was able to do really great power up over the top of the climb. So you can see there's two riders in front of me. So I would I would catch up to them or catch up to the, the group in front of me on the climbs. And then we would just have these ripping descents. Uh, the GoPro really doesn't do it justice. Uh, here, let me let me let me fix that. Yes. Okay. This is far more like what it felt like. So when you when you see the descents, don't think about what it actually looks like. Think about this. This is how it felt to descend uh, down all of these descents. Like, and uh, there were shadows, so you couldn't always see. There was huge rocks everywhere. Uh, the gravel was really loose if you kind of got out of these like tire tracks. It was super sketchy. Even Keegan Swenson posted something about uh, glad that he survived. This was by far the coolest part of the whole course. Uh, it was this like uh, cutout road that kind of went through this huge quarry. Um, and I knew uh, that right after this was the first aid station. I think the first aid station was like 37-ish miles in. And I don't actually put distance on my Garmin because I don't want to see it as I'm riding. But this was kind of that first indicator that I was like, oh, I, I know about where I am on the course. Rolling into that aid station uh, about a mile later, um, this is the second timing mat and I've actually moved up to 33rd position. So we've dropped, we've moved up 12 spots. And now, again, goal of top 40 and I had a big crash and now I'm 33rd. Like this is, this is going very well. I had all of the nutrition that I needed for the whole day and I had enough water to get me to the second aid station so I, I didn't plan on stopping here. I don't think anyone in the group that I was with stopped here. We just rolled right through. Again, this is a great example of like what was happening all day. So we would hit these climbs and see there's a group right in front of us. Um, so I'm able to, to do really great power. I was kind of dropping the group that I was with and then riding up and catching uh, the next group on the road. And this was actually a, a really big group. I think a few people that I was riding with, yeah, you can see one of them on the left, um, was, oh, there's that's DNA tattoo guy. Um, so, so we would kind of form these big packs. And this was by far the, the biggest group that I was with. I'm not sure what this kid in the back was doing. Like he just would never shift his bike. And I knew he could because he would shift like a few times. So his battery wasn't dead, but then like wouldn't shift more. So he's always in this really low cadence. I, I don't know. I mean, but 
good on him for being out there, so, but it was just, like, kind of weird watching him do, like, 20 RPM up a, up a climb. And then, oh, look who it is. Mr. Blue Bike Guy. Actually, I, I didn't know that this was, uh, this was the guy that I had crashed into. Um, I didn't realize it until I was looking back at this footage. But yeah, there's the guy that I crashed into. Um, which also means that I'm doing really well uh, as far as like catching people, because he obviously was in that front group that then kept riding. Um, so obviously got dropped at some point, but if I've caught back up to him, there's probably a pretty good chance that I'm actually doing a really great job of kind of salvaging the day. Here's, again, one of those, like, super sketchy descents. The guy in front of me, you know, slides out. That was really common. You'd be coming down, you couldn't see, you'd kind of get into these, like, loose sections, and I was just constantly thinking, I do not want to crash again. Because I know if I crash again, then I'm then I'm really going to be done. Uh, so you can see they're kind of riding away from me. I just, I'm probably riding my brakes right now. I just don't want to crash. And you, obviously you can see, like, you can't see much. And all of a sudden you'd come upon, like, you'd be doing 20 miles an hour, and then you'd hit this super rough section of gravel, and, like, that guy kind of washed out. Or you'd hit some bedrock, and you'd get, like, bounced off your bike. I was just constantly trying to not crash again. Here's a perfect example, 28 miles an hour into this corner, loose gravel. Uh, you can't really hear it, but like I lock up the brakes and I slide a little bit into the corner. Uh, terrified, absolutely terrified that I'm gonna crash again. Okay, so this is, this is tricky. Uh, somebody's down, obviously he's hurt pretty bad. I, I stop and I'm like, do you need anything? And he's like, yes. So I was like, okay, what do you need? And he didn't say anything. And I was like, all right, well, there's somebody with you. They're on the phone. I, what can I do? I don't know how to help you. And the group that I'm with doesn't stop. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'm supposed to just keep going. I don't know. Let me know what you think I should, like, I don't, what should I have done there? I felt I wanted to be helpful, but also I don't, I couldn't have done anything, especially when there was already somebody with him. Somebody was already on the phone. Uh, as we were riding, we were catching uh, some of the pro women, and they were being really classy about the race. So they weren't sitting in our group. They were they were really riding uh, just the pro women. So they weren't letting uh, the men take a lot of pulls. Uh, they were really just sort of uh, staying with their own race, which was kind of weird for us because I didn't want to just have it seem like I was just letting them do the work, like I wanted to contribute, but at the same time, like, I don't want to interfere with their event. Like, they're the pros, they're the ones doing this for a living, so it's really, I, I thought it was important that I just kind of sit back. There's another one of the timing maps. Um, I'm now in 15th position, so I've moved up another eight spots, and this is pretty close to where I finish overall. Another really sketchy descent. Um, I know I'm only going 18 miles an hour. Uh, you can see the, the pro women are much braver than I am. Um, but it was just, it was really, really rough. And I, like I said, I just didn't want to crash again. Now, unfortunately, 56 miles in, this is kind of where my GoPro dies. Uh, so it was so rough and chunky out there you never you would never dare take your hands off the handlebars to hit the record button or the stop button so i ended up just recording way more than i wanted to um so yeah the battery didn't last very long it lasted only about halfway um but i ended up riding i like i said i passed one more person finished 14th overall um at the last like maybe five miles i caught up to a few more pro women hannah otto was in that group and it was again one of those cases of like trying to not interfere with their race. There were three pro women that came into the finish line together. Uh, they all sprinted. I didn't have any men uh, behind me, so I just kind of rolled in behind them trying to make sure that I gave them the space that they needed. Uh, and overall, so thrilled with how the day went. Had that big crash, was able to come back from it, keep riding, uh, kept you know my emotions in check and just did did the work and got a great result. This, this was an incredible race and I absolutely will do it again, uh, probably with even bigger tires and less pressure because it was just that rough out there. But I, I had an absolute blast and I can't wait to do it again.
safe. <laughs>